Hi everyone, it's David Kent with Kent Health Systems, and we're just going to take a few moments to talk about some of the tips that we can pass on to our patients for the many hours that they spend inside of their vehicles, how they can be safe, ergonomically set correctly, and take care of themselves between treatments. Um, as you can see, you know, anytime we're in a vehicle, it's important how we have the steering wheel set. For example, we want to make sure that we have a full 12 inches between our body and the steering wheel. Of course, we want to make sure that we're sitting properly on our ischial tuberosities, and we're going to take a look at that here in just a moment. Also, the position of the seat belt is very important, how it's positioned on our patients. Uh, as well as ourselves, whether we're just um, in a taxi cab moving from the airport somewhere or we're crossing a parking lot from one end to another uh, between stores, possibly just uh, driving around town or driving across the country. At all times, it's very important that we are positioned correctly. These airbags open at a very fast rate. It's very important we don't have food in our mouth. Uh, you know, we don't expect an accident to happen, but if we're eating food and that airbag opens and somebody hits us, it can be life-threatening. Also, our distance away uh, is very important. If we're sitting up very close and that airbag opens, again, it's opening up at hundreds of miles an hour and um, it's going to definitely cause some type of trauma, as well as the position of our hands. You know, if you have your hand across the steering wheel, again, as we're doing different movements, we want to make sure that our hands aren't in a position where they can, again, be thrown to hit us, whereas otherwise the airbag can throw it out. So let's take a look at some of the position. First, we're going to start and talk about the seatbelt. Of course, we're positioned in a manner where we discussed we have a good distance between the uh, steering wheel and, and our body. We want to make sure that our body is uh, held in place properly. You know, during a vehicle, this is really just one of the laws of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And just like when you shoot, um, if you're playing billiards and shooting a pool ball and it goes into another ball, that energy transfers from one ball into another and moves on. Same thing happens during a car accident. If we're still and then another vehicle comes and hits us from behind, that kinetic energy has been transferred into our vehicle and into our body. So the purpose of the seat belt is to keep our body in place, of course, protect us within this cage that the vehicle has created for us and part of that is that our body's properly protected and properly harnessed in place so we want to make sure that the seat belt is very low across the hip we don't want it high if it's high I'm going to show you in a moment how that can go into the abdominal organ so we want the seat belt low and we want it across the hip we want to make sure that the shoulder harness is coming across the chest. It's actually coming across the clavicle and it's holding us in place. Sometimes people will put the seatbelt under their body. Now what starts to happen? If you have the seatbelt high and low, I'm going to show you basically you're just, the, the body is just in a position where when there's trauma, you're going to automatically start to really spin. And then also, this belt's going to cut in, in very deep internally and, and injure organs. So that's why it's, it's designed a certain way. It's designed to go across the chest, and we're going to take a look at that next. Also, we want to make sure that our arms have a slight bend, but we're, if we were turning the wheel, or moving the wheel, you know, our arms, we still would always have contact with it. There again, crossing our, you know, we want to make sure that we're using proper ergonomics whenever we're driving. And uh, so let's move on. We're going to take a look at how the seat belt uh, actually holds the axial skeleton, our, our, our bones in place when we're driving. So as we can see here, the skeleton, the axial skeleton of the body, the bones are actually held in place with the seatbelt. If we have the seatbelt low, it's going to be coming across the anominate bones or the, the bones that help to form the pelvis. Um, and then we can also see that this uh, harness is coming across the rib cage. 
right across the clavicle and then that's helping to keep the whole uh, torso in place and when all that's positioned right then there's just going to be very little movement of the head of course the airbag can open if it, we're in the right position there's going to be minimal movement and that's what's so important there again as we can see if this is low see how it's going to cut into the organs or if the lower belt is too high there again we can see how it's going to go very deep and we're going to take another look at another model because i really want to make sure that you understand how important it is that we're positioned correctly at all times so now that we have this model in place it's going to be easy for you to realize how important it is because actually what we have on this model if we if I take it actually I'm just going to unseat belt it a little bit so that we can take a look so really the rib cage here there we go so the rib cage is actually protecting our lungs and our heart right here we have the diaphragm muscle which is attaching along the ribs and then here we can see the liver we have the um, intestines here here we have the ascending the transverse and descending colon so of course we don't want the seat belt if it's too high if it's not down um, along by the anominate bones coming across the rib cage that seat belt's going to cut into these internal organs thank you for joining me i wish you uh good health happiness uh pass on some of these tips to your patients apply them yourself Look forward to seeing you soon. Make sure you join us for our next video. We're going to take a look at uh, the effect of having different things in your back pocket and how that has an effect on the spine when you're driving. I'm David Kent. Look forward to seeing you soon. It's going to take a moment to discuss the importance of our ergonomics or the position of our body when we're driving in a car, actually anytime we're, we're seated, whether we're at a desk, uh, working at a computer, eating, uh, enjoying friends, driving, but driving especially is what I really want to talk about here. Uh, so we just got done talking about seatbelt positions and now I just want to talk about that when there are different things underneath our hips or in our back pocket. Some people use different types of containers that uh, when, when that's underneath the pelvis like this, it starts to throw the body off. Now, sometimes we need to perform a procedure called a walletectomy. I actually had someone, actually this is their actual wallet. So this is over, this is about an inch thick. And just if we stop and look at the body, so our two anominate bones along with the sacrum form the pelvis and that is designed to perform to be a base or a structure for our spine now if we take something like a wallet and we put it in our back pocket and put it underneath our ischial tuberosity as you can see we've started to create an angle in the spine now there's something called the writing reflex just like uh, if you touch something hot there's a reflex that causes your hand to pull away you step on something sharp and you'll lift your foot well you start to get positioned off balance and there's even a reflex that tries to get that corrected the writing reflex so as that gets implemented basically the body's going to start to create different distortions to get the eyes level with the horizon so it's very important that uh, when what I would recommend is that you actually take a wallet or anything you have in your back pocket and put it in the front pocket it's going to allow the pelvis to uh, sit on its base the way it's designed and then it's going to help reduce the possibility of any type of uh, back pain or any type of spasming in the future.